Well, we got some good news for Android users today, and that is that the developer preview for the next big version of Android, Android 9P, was released today. So while that doesn't really mean that most people are gonna be able to use this and actually install it, it does mean that we can get a view of the new features. So that is very exciting. And the first thing to know is what does the P stand for? And apparently some internal memos have showed that it's apparently gonna be called pistachio ice cream. Now me personally, I think they could do a little bit better with that name, but you know what, if that's the worst problem with it, then I don't think we're in too bad of a shape. But anyway, let's get into the actual new changes because there are several very, very interesting features. Some of them are kind of dumb, but still interesting nonetheless. So the first one is kind of strange and it's actually not that surprising though. And that is that Android 9 will support a cutout in the screen. So if a phone has like a notch, basically copying an iPhone for some reason, there will now be software built into the operating system to handle that and you could basically change what type of notch is, is going to be shown. So I think that'll be probably in the developer options or if the phone manufacturer wants to put that in specifically, they'll be able to change that. And that tells me that there are going to be probably more than a few phones that are going to be copying Apple's stupid notch at the top of the iPhone 10 or X, but apparently it's a sign of things to come. Now, this next feature though is actually really awesome and it is support for Wi-Fi indoor positioning. You can kind of think of this like indoor GPS and it uses a Wi-Fi protocol called 802.11mc. And I don't think this is a totally new like data protocol like we had with N or AC. I think it's more of like a separate thing specifically to be used for this indoor positioning. And it uses what is known as round trip time. And the idea is that it basically uses triangulation to determine where you are in like a store or a mall or something like that based on how long it takes the signal to go from your phone to the access point. Makes sense, it just uses triangulation because we know the speed of light, not gonna get into the science of it, but that's how it works. So this does mean that maybe if you're in a store and you use their app and you wanna figure out where a certain product is, then if you have Android 9P and you have that software enabled or something like that, if it, if it has to be enabled, you go into the store's app and say, where's this product? And it will literally show you where you are in a map of the store and where the product is. And it might even be integrated into Google Maps. I think this is actually something that is gonna be really popular because even the new version of Bluetooth has this idea of indoor positioning. I talked about that in previous videos. So this will be super cool as long as, you know, stores and things actually do support it. And here's another cool idea. Maybe if you have multiple access points, not sure if you would need that. Maybe if you lose your phone in your own house, then you could use this to figure out exactly where it is. Or maybe even other devices that aren't even necessarily your phone, if it does support that round trip time or MC, you could find all sorts of other devices. So obviously that might be a little ways off and you would have to have a phone that does support that. But I think in the future, it'll be pretty normal. Okay, next feature, this is kind of small, but significant still, and that's some updates to messages and notifications. So right now, if you get a notification for a message, you can drop it down. And if you have a third party app like Textra or something, you can usually reply straight through that. But apparently there will be built in features now for replying directly to a text message from the notification by either tapping on a pre-generated message that it thinks you wanna send, or you might be able to add in text right there to reply. And also, not exactly with the notifications, but you'll also apparently be able to save replies as a draft. So that'll be nice if you're typing up a long text message and you're not really sure what to say or something like that, you can save it as a draft and send it later. Not huge stuff, but still nice. Moving on, this one's kind of interesting. So dual camera support. Now you might think, wait a minute, we already had dual camera support. Phones have dual cameras forever, but this is a little bit different. And that is that it will allow you to basically access both cameras, whether it's dual front or dual back at the same time, which will allow for things like seamless zooming. So we kind of have that on the iPhone already where if you tap the 2X, it'll look like it's zooming in, but really it's just switching between the cameras. So you'll be able to do that apparently on Android 9P. 
and also I presume it means you'll be allowed to like record both cameras at once for some reason if you want to like you want to take a uh, telephoto as well as a wide angle camera at the same exact time you can do that I'm sure there's already software that allowed you to do that before but now it'll be native so you won't need special software that it'll probably be accessible through an API so any app could use it and presumably this is probably hinting that we're gonna get a lot more phones now for Android that do have dual camera before it usually starts out only one or two phones has it then pretty much everything has it so again it's kind of a sign of things to come all right now the final major feature and then we got some other ones we can talk about but the next what I would consider major feature is HDR support for VP9 video codec and HEIF image compression format support now, that might sound like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, what the heck do I mean by that, but it should be pretty easy to understand when I put it this way. So, VP9 is simply a video codec that is mostly used on YouTube, and it does support HDR, but apparently Android phones didn't support HDR in that codec until now. So I guess, even if phones did have HDR screens, and you were watching a video on YouTube that supported HDR, well then, it didn't allow the codec to be used in that way, so you couldn't actually watch in HDR. So now, supposedly, you will be able to watch YouTube videos in HDR if it supports it. And that will also go for like Google Play movies in HDR, which is nice. Although I'm kind of surprised that they didn't already support this before. It's something I really thought they supported before, especially because so many phones were touting that they had HDR screens. So it's kind of sketchy. I really think they should have mentioned that even though you had everything that you needed to support it, Android itself didn't, but whatever, I guess it's better than nothing now. The other one I mentioned is HEIF. That's an image format specifically you may know, which is what iPhone recently introduced in the latest versions of iPhone and iOS. So now if you take a picture on an iPhone in that higher image compression format, HEIF, which stands for High Efficiency Image Format, I believe, if I didn't get that wrong, and now you can send it directly to someone with Android or receive it from someone with an iPhone and actually be able to view it without having to convert it. Now, I'm not sure if there have been any issues really, because I think if you had an iPhone, I assume it did some sort of conversion anyway, so people wouldn't have to worry about it. But now, potentially, if you want someone to send you it directly, and you get it in that format, you won't have any problems. And I did actually mention this when Apple first released it. I'm like, look, when Apple releases something, everything is gonna move to support it, and that is the fact with HEIF. It was like unheard of before, and now everything's gonna have to support it. However, one thing to note is I'm not 100% sure if that means you'll be able to take photos in that format, just that at least you'll be able to view them. All right, so finally we can go over some behind the scenes updates that aren't huge, but still worth mentioning. So first of all, with security, there is now going to be a so-called unified fingerprint authentication dialogue. And what I believe this means is that now, no matter where you are on Android and no matter what app you're using, it will be the same dialogue to prompt you for a fingerprint scan. So this way it's just easier to understand, okay, this app is legit, they're not just like asking me for my fingerprint and it's not using Android. It'll all be very consistent and you'll know this is actually Android asking for the fingerprint center and it's using that API correctly. They also mentioned that there's gonna be so-called high assurance user confirmation of sensitive transactions. So I guess this means that maybe when people were going to buy stuff or type in personal information they didn't realize what they were doing or confirming. So now it's like, look, this is what you're typing in, know that you're typing in this and make sure that people know what they're doing. The next small update has to do with autofill framework. So you know this was introduced actually in the last version, Android 8.0, where you can now use autofill apps much more integrated into Android and autofill passwords and stuff. And apparently that was just improved a little bit. They've also improved neural network APIs, which is going to allow on-device machine learning. So we know that AI and machine learning is a huge thing. And now I guess your phone itself will be able to do some machine learning and not rely on sending information to the cloud and stuff. And obviously it doesn't have as much processing power as something on the cloud. But if it's like a small thing, it might be interesting that it's able to use that and apps will be able to take advantage of it as well. And then finally, very small, there is an update to how images can be decoded. So I guess this means that maybe for loading images 
or showing GIFs or something, then potentially it'll not take as long to load. And it's also kind of ties in with that HEIF thing I mentioned before. So theoretically, images throughout Android will hopefully load faster and be much more optimized, I guess. So that is it. Some of the major updates in the next version of Android 9.0 P, pistachio ice cream apparently. So you guys can let us know what you think down in the comments or there are any features that I forgot to mention. I'm pretty sure I read through that document pretty well. And if there's something that you think they should have added, remember it's not the final version. This is the first developer preview. So I'm assuming they're gonna be changing a lot. They might be adding things, they might be taking things out. And we won't know for sure until of course, they do release the final version. But anyway, again, let me know what you guys think. If you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here you can just click on. If you wanna subscribe, that'd be great. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos because that YouTube algorithm but anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.